Hello, my name is Bill Haley, and this is for Haley 2024, The Movement's Government Reform Ideas. Now, this video is going to be on the financial sector. How are we going to do banking? Have a new way of doing monetary policy? But first, we have to step back and look at how we fully do the um, constitutional amendment. What I'm talking about is I'm proposing a constitutional amendment that is going to give a lot more freedom, go to a competitive governance type of model. People can be governed the way they want to be governed. So it's a whole new system. It's a very modest proposal, but very radical change from what we currently have. A lot less um, government control, a lot more societal oversight, a lot more accountability, separation of powers, tremendously um, separating powers. So taking a lot of things into the free enterprise system, not so much monopolized governance. We have only a very few things monopolized governance, and that's more of a societal oversight role. So let's look at the whole thing. Then we're going to quickly, probably take about seven minutes to do a financial I mean, the whole Constitution, and then we're going to um, go through the financial um, sector clauses for the Constitution. Then we're going to give some examples. I plan on doing a shorter video with just the clauses for the financial institutions and the sectors, and then another one with the, just the examples. So this one's going to be a little bit longer, hopefully um, less than an hour, but we'll, we'll see. And then we'll um, do two shorter ones, one with just examples how we do the monetary policy, and then one just to clauses, strictly clauses. So let's go through this a little bit. We're going to separate all government power into 30 sectors. So the people in charge, the elected leaders, the congresses, the house of delegates, the governors, the presidents, be 30 of them. We take everything we have right now, state, federal, and local, then we multiply it by 30. We don't multiply the power, we divide the power. Divide the power. Family law goes into one sector, Military goes into another one. Insurance goes into another one. Work safety goes into another one. Dealing with land and water goes into another one. The courts go into another one. Law enforcement. That's the type of thing. Top level elected leaders. No one person is in charge of more than one sector. So you can see how that will create a lot of accountability. And when people vote or select, I'll talk about selecting in a minute, where people vote, they're concentrating their efforts onto their one sector. So if you don't like how one politician is for welfare and not how they like like how they're doing education, you can have two different votes. Your concentration is for one um, person for the um, education sector, another one for roads, another one for food and food, another one for insurance, another one for financial. So let's keep on going. Okay, within each sector. There's going to be roughly 12 different CRAs. CRAs are competitive regulatory agencies. They govern, they regulate, and they send representatives up to the monopolized. Monopolized is going to have a very little power in some, a little bit more in other ones. And we'll have to see, um, I have videos out on that. I'll go through which ones have more authority at the monopolized sector board level or the has more authority at the CRA level. The financial is going to have more at the... CRA level, the um, rep, not the representative level, but the competitive regulatory agencies. Competitive regulatory agencies only go govern their members. You select one, and you have to do. You have to select one. There'll be about a dozen of them. You select your CRA. Then there's that CRA governs you. They have to govern you, or they're not a CRA. They have certain responsibilities. They have to meet certain thresholds. You cannot cr cause a negative externality to society by not having family law, by not having insurance regulations, by not having um, labor law regulations, by not having whatever. You can have whatever regulations you want, as long as it's not harming others. And the rating system is going to have put a rating floor on standards. A lot of ways to do it, about to get above a rating floor, but that rating floor is to stop um, you or your transactions or your group from cars causing harm to the society at large, creating negative externalities is what I'm trying to say. So the rating floors will stop negative externalities, or at least significant negative externalities. Everybody has to deal with, because we're in society, some negative externalities. We're trying to stop significant negative externalities. We cannot operate if every last little thing offends somebody and it, gets, and it puts a stop to that activity. Everybody has to have a certain amount of liberty. Where's that correct balance? The rating system is going to help create that balance. Those CRAs do the regulations. 
the rain floors or the rain system can create that good balance. And people are going to most, most likely, people are going to be choosing, selecting um, CRAs that have a lot higher than the rating floor. Nobody wants to go down to that rating floor, or def and you can't go below the rating floor. So you select first your CRA, and then you, within your membership of your CRA, you elect leaders, executive, legislative, judicial leaders within your CRAs. And then you even send representatives up, representatives up to the sector board level, proportionally to the sector board level. That's where representative monopolized governance is. It's monopolized regulations. You still get governed through your CRAs, but that monopolized governance only happens when there's significant negative externalities. So there's a lot to look on this. Look, look on this one screen, and I have hour-long videos on this. Many, many videos on the rating system, CRAs, and the whole nine yards. What the sector board responsibilities are, what the parent sector um, board responsibilities are. Everything's laid out. 90% of everything we're doing here is to make the CRAs work. Everything outside the CRAs is to make the CRAs work. So let's continue going. The whole constitution, we got citizen um, section, general laws, bylaws, federal, state, and local, original authority, what level has top level authority, and, and, um, and where do we even get the authority to even have laws? So we go, go through all that. We have a system where we sign a um, societal contract, a uh, social contract, supermajority. If it's at the monopolized sector board level, it has to get a 70% supermajority, which is going to keep a lot of things down at the CRA level. The, um, I have full videos on the parent sector board, how that's structured. The sector boards, that's dealing with each sector. Um, competitive regulatory agencies, how that's structured. The rating system, that's going to be structured like the CRA system is uh, side is. It's going to be a mirror view, but they have different, res different responsibilities. Taxation and debt, how we, we still have to pay for everything. So how, how is taxes going to work? Most, mostly going to be CRA fees from the CRAs that you choose. How we're going to deal with the debt that we currently have in our current government? Well, we sell off all government assets. You might sell it off to a CRA, a competitive regulatory agency, or to the free enterprise system. Because everything that the government is currently doing so it could be done through the free enterprise system or competitive governance. But they have to buy that. It's going to pay down the debt. Maybe not all of it, but I have a whole mechanism to pay down the debt. Pockets of freedom is a way of doing immigration and foreign policy. And then states partial acceptance, that's just to help get this um, constitution passed through the Article 5 of the current U.S. Constitution. Separation of, separation of responsibilities and authorities into 30 sectors. So we're, let's go over that real quick. We get rid of welfare altogether, we go to a charity system. Got many videos on that. Um, foreign, foreign protection system, this is at the federal level. Everything else is, has a rational authority at the state level. So top level elect executive leaders, like the president, we have one, one president for the top diplomat, one president as a top commander in chief, another president for the military corporations, which is not gonna be have too much authority there um, because the commander in chief um, commands the military. Military capability system, it's a free market uh, funding mechanism. Not fully free market, but as much as you can, is many free enterprise principles in there. And then the military authorization, it's a societal oversight. Make sure nothing goes out of, um, out of whack, goes into the danger zone. They can put stops to many things before they get into trouble zone. The charity system will um, has five sectors. Oh, we did that. I did went it backwards. Okay, violent, violent crime mitigation system. We want to separate all these out. A lot of this stuff going into the free enterprise system, or at least to the competitive reg, competitive um, governing system. So um, that's important to understand. Um, healthcare, um, two different sectors. Financial, two different sectors. We're dealing with that today. Insurance. Um, that's different than financial. They have a lot of different responsibilities. I know they might merge a lot, but it has different responsibilities. Um, so, for example, insurance is going to deal with Social Security and Medicare and how to transition that to a free enterprise system. So, and many other responsibilities as well. But it's not going to be mainly financial. It's going to be more the insurance part of it. 
Um, and that, that'll have a separation. Food, education, manufacturing, human resources and sales are gonna be interesting what we do with that. Identity sector, I'm really excited about what responsibilities, government responsibilities I put into that. A lot of services can come through that that we currently don't have through government right now. And that, that has high potential of making our lives better and making government better. Environmental, work safety, transportation, media and communication, land and water. All these will have separate um, leaders. Every one of them will have a full set of um, CRAs, full set of rating agencies. So highly important to understand how that works. So competitive regulatory agencies is the base for everything. State, federal, and even local. Um, same thing. Um, we'll have separate. We still have three levels of government, but we have, um, and every level of government has all 30 sectors. Some will have a lot more responsibilities at the federal level, some more at the state level, and some will have more responsibilities at the local level. That's all included in the Constitution. It's always good to come back on there. I can stay an hour on this screen alone and keep on talking. But let's continue. But I do have videos out there, me talking for an hour on this, this, um, this alone, going through all the clauses of, within the Constitution. Okay. We're dealing with financial and financial banking right now. That's what we're dealing with. I'm going to be mostly talking about finance, banking. Financial is going to be mo more business deals and stuff like that. Uh, financial banking is going to be more specifically with the banks and monetary policy. And most of this is going to be monetary policy. I don't have a lot of clauses for financial. It's super important still. But the clauses within the financial is mostly the the um clauses within the CRA, how, how it's structured. The structure is what creates the um, better system right here. Financial um, banking, there's a lot of clauses dealing with monetary policy and that's what we're gonna concentrate here on. Okay, so we're 12 minutes into the video right now, but you need to know the structure of the Constitution to have a good understanding of what this is. The financial banking sector is established and let's go through this. It's establishment means you get 12 CRAs, 12 RAs, and a certain set of government responsibilities. It's um, blocked out from the other sectors. The purpose of the uh, financial banking sector is to regulate banks and issue currency. So this is at the state level, and um, we'll talk about how we, we deal with local, which is not too much local, but there'll be a local component. And the federal, the federal will have um, a little bit of response, well, have a major responsibility within this, but it's going to be very, more mechanical. We'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, financial CRAs in sector 18 and sector 19 may set strong privacy protections for their members. So it's highly important to understand. Um, the United States created um, money, physical money, so it can, we cannot be traced by government. Now, they are tracing us way too much. They are, uh, they are um, breaking the Constitution, in my opinion, with tax code, which means they're getting way too much into our business, too, but looking at our papers, um, Fourth Amendment uh, violations all over the place within the tax code. They should be a uh, strict scrutiny dealing with only getting, into, only getting into our records very, very minimally to collect our taxes. When we have so many, such a big tax code, we are going way beyond the strict scrutiny and they're looking at our papers in every way possible. Anyway, let's go through this. So uh, with a new system, super strong pri um, privacy protections for their members. The rating system may set, a, set or increase privacy rating floors with a 30% vote. A 75% vote lowers privacy rating floors. So it's highly important to understand what that, the rating system and how they're um, Rating floors for civil liberties works out. I got a couple long videos on that, really talking about the freedom of um, speech and freedom of religion, freedom, all the different civil liberties, and privacy protections is one of those. I believe it's um, Constitutional Amendment 4 dealing with that, and not to mention 14 and, and the like. Is 5 included? Maybe. I forget now, exactly. Sorry about that. I'm trying to do a video and it's hard to think of constitutional clauses when you're doing a video here. Okay, anyway, so there, if you don't understand the um, rating floors, that's a whole video on itself, civil liberties and all that, that we have videos on that. 
banks are allowed to offer and citizens may use anonymous digital bank accounts. That means government cannot look at it. Um, or your CRA might be able to look at yours and you pick your CRA. But even at that, the, C, the bank's allowed to have an anonymous, even though, so the, even though the CO, CRA cannot even look at it. Owner, unless you have a proper warrant, which you might not even be able to look at it with this proper warrant because we have anonymous. And they're, they're allowed to do very strong privacy protections. So there's a balance between having too much privacy and having too little. And we'll try to get that balance right using um, the law enforcement sectors, we're lo looking at the judicial sectors, looking at civil liberty sectors. There's a full system to increase or decrease rights dealing with negative externalities. It's the negative externalities that take away our rights. But if we have such strong rights, we never can catch a criminal and they keep on uh, perpetrating and harming others. So there's a balance there. So if you let out a murderer 20 times after mur mur murdering 20 people, or even a lot more than that, look how many dead people there are to give one person civil liberties as you took away the life of at least 19 of them because he, um, you could put them away after the first one. Okay, owners of the anonymous accounts maintain their voting rights where applicable in assets they own through their Sector 25 CRAs. So just because you own money doesn't mean you don't own, you, you're gonna own something of real value. And a lot of times that has voting rights, stock ownership type of voting rights. And I, I have that very strong within my system. Every state level financial banking CRA must create its own digital currency. So I wanna make sure everybody understands state level. Not so much federal, we're not federal, not local, every state level. The federal can coordinate some things. But what's important to set to note is I'm very, in the constitutional clause, state level financial. So you can have associations at the federal level. You can have um, bank, bank, I'm sorry, branch type banking at the local levels to um, coordinate some of this stuff. But the state level is going to be important to understand. And it's also important to understand the, um, this word digital. This is going to be the digital currency. You can have anonymous digital. So it's gonna be like money being anonymous, but you can have anonymous digital. We have uh, paper money, we have coin, and that's uh, anonymous right now. We, do, we are in a digital world right now, and that digital, the anonymous needs to go with the digital. So it's highly important for civil liberties for the anonymous to incorporate into the digital. The know your customer laws out there for banks, that's not where we need to go. We need to go away from that in a tremendous way. I know they're trying to cr catch um, crooks. I understand that. And there needs to be a balance. But government does not need to have the knowledge of everybody's um, banking just to catch a crook. So there might be a warrant situation where they can dig in and try to find somebody with a warrant from a judge going through due process. Due process being very rig rigorous um, debate within the judicial system, making sure they show their work with a defense account, defense um, attorney and a prosecutor at, or the um, cops trying to get some pieces of information. No longer should we have a system of warrants where we don't have a defense to go in there. Now, a person doesn't even have to be there. Their CRA, defense CRA, um, can handle on their depart on their side to make sure they're showing their work. Anyway, that's another subject for another time, and I've done videos on that kind of subject. At least I touched on it, but there needs to be a lot more on that. We're, 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 what we're doing right now is not sufficient. We're getting warrants um, that are not proper because the defense is not making the pro making sure the prosecutors show their work and prove it and be held accountable for lies or omissions. Anyway, I'm going off topic. Then an MCAP, which I'll describe what an MCAP is, let me just say it. Monetary Capital Asset Portfolio. Monetary Capital Asset Portfolio. Is, a, is defined as a portfolio of actual items of real value. Each, 
I'm wondering if I actually put that into the Constitution. Right, there it is. Monetary Capital Asset Portfolio is an MCAP. Okay. It's, a, it's items of real value. It's a portfolio of items of real value. So just imagine a stock room and you put in gold, silver, um, bonds, um, loan contracts, um, commodities. Obviously, you're not going to have corn in there or pork bellies or um, chickens. You're going to have certificates of ownership of those things. A CRA deposits its assets of actual items into its MCAP. So they collect M um, assets from their customers as things are worth. Hey, I have an have um, Exxon stock. I have an Amazon stock. I have this stock. I have this bond from this municipal company. I have this gold. I'm going to deposit this and I would like to have currency to be able to spend out there in the market. So that's what we're talking about. And I'll describe a little bit more going into this. Okay, let me. Um, so it's actual items. Um, deposits is assets of actual items into its MCAP. The MCAP is a storeroom. Just imagine one storeroom. Now the storeroom is going to be all over the nation. It's going to be all over the state. It's going to be all over the place. You're going to have access to that storeroom within miles of your miles of wherever you're you're at. Well, these aspects of, um, of that. Any asset in an open trading market is eligible for the MCAP. So anything that they're out there in the trading markets are eligible to go into an MCAP. So stocks, bonds, gold, all the stuff on the trading markets, they're eligible. A loan contract is an actual item with real value. The bank gives me $15,000 as a car loan for me to go buy that used car. That loan contract was worth $15,000 to that bank, plus interest, probably $17,000 by the time I paid it back, maybe $18,000. So that $3,000 is service charges and profits for the use of money over time. So it's highly important to understand a loan contract is worth money. You are um, agreeing to work and turn over the money from that work in the future months, maybe 60 months for our loan, our car loan, a certain amount, the amount you borrowed plus interest. So it's an actual item of real value. The expected revenue of a clearly defined future tax is an actual item with real value that's eligible for the MCAP. We're gonna go away for what with debt the way we're currently doing debt for government. If, if um, the government needs money and they don't have it now, they're going to sign a future tax, 1% sales tax through this general, um, through this um, well-defined sales, um, one, one particular type of sales or whatever, or all sales in general, and from this year to this year. And that's going to have a value. It might fluctuate in value over time as it comes near. Let's say you put it five years out. It can fluctuate over time. The people don't want to buy into that or won't value a tax if it gets too high of a tax or taxes pile up on top of each other too much and you end up with a 50% sales tax. Well, they know that's going to re reduce down the number of transactions because the tax is going to take away so much of the money or the incentive to do the trade. So there's a Laffer curve effect in, in there and you can make con loan, con loan contracts with that Laffer curve understanding in it saying, hey, if you have too many taxes within this year, we know that um, tax, taxable transactions will go down and we're going to have to adjust our tax rate um, to go up or the value of the, um, that revenue, the value of that asset is going to go down, up, whatever the case may be. So anyway, but that's eligible for an MCAP. So we're going to change, we're going to put our debt into the monetary system. And obviously, people will be very concerned about how much um, money we're currently using with tomorrow's um, labor hours. And there's going to be a natural way to have a natural um, per either persuasion to do more or dissuasion to do less of more, um, buying more things in the future with, 
future labor hours from the government. People do that with um, car loans and people do that with house loans or personal loans or business loans already. So I'm not saying it's not going to ever be worth it for a government to do it. You build this road now, we get access to that road, it's going to make us more productive and then the um, revenue will come in from that road because we go to a private road system and um, we're going to charge tolls and that's going to have an income coming in. So that road tax is going to be, well, it's not going to be a tax, a road service charge for through the tolls, uh, and we have a toll method for the private roads, it's going to be um, com money coming in, and it's going to be private road. People get to choose how, how much they spend, I mean, how much they charge for their service of road services. Anyway, that's a whole other video. That I have videos out there um, already on that. I'm getting ready to. It's June of, late June of 20, 2021. Probably well into July of 2021, I'll do my road one again, concentrating on constitutional law. Um, anyway, let's keep on going. A share loan. A share loan is a revenue from a percentage of a well-defined future earnings. So this is an individual share loan. And most of the time, share loans are going to be a, a, um, given for education because we go to a free, totally free enterprise um, education system. So you're going to um, take out a share loan, which means... I agree, if you pay for my K-12 through education, I agree to um, give give this person who lent me the money, this bank that lent me the money, I'll agree, agree to give them 5% of my income for life or for the next 20 years or whatever the terms are. If Maybe you, you can uh, skimp and save and um, do it on the cheap, get your education on the cheap. You can still study hard, but get it, get it for less cost and say, I don't even want I'll get it for 3% or 4%. Somebody wants to spend a lot of money and say, I'll do it for 7 or 8%. Now, the parents have to do it for their children under the age of 13. Then the um, teenagers can start contracting out their future labor hours um, to get their education in their high school um, years, 13 through whatever, whenever. Um, they have to use their own labor hours. But that's all, that's gonna be my education video, and I have um I will be putting out in July my education video on that. I already have many videos on that from a year or two ago, M much many write ups on that, so it's out there. So it's all on Haley2024.org. Okay, so share loan is can be is a actual item of real value that is eligible for an MCAP. Now most likely this is going to be grouped in with a couple hundred, if not thousands, of um, share loans. Because one person's share loan, that can fluctuate too much. Somebody gets sick, somebody dies, um, somebody gets in a car wreck, somebody um, gets a major good job and they, um, where they win a lawsuit and they get a whole bunch of income coming in. There's a lot of things that um, can make incomes go up or down. So that share loan per person is going to fluctuate significantly. But you group a thousand together um, and you can have significant... Um, St stability on how much that is worth. So most likely these will be going in as a bundle of thousand, maybe from this graduating class from high school, maybe that graduating class from um, college. There's a lot of different business models. You can do it individually or you can do it um, together or you can do it individually and then the bank puts it together with others. And let's say you stay, want to be a stay-at-home parent, then you um, you work through and pay back some, you, the agreement is, hey, I want 5% of your income, but if you're not working, you're going to be putting work hours in the charity economy. Charity economy is something, on this video, I haven't touched on hardly at all, but it's within the charity system and something that you can do to work, put worth into the system. So let's continue going. Every financial banking CRA has wide latitude in determining its assets for its end cap. So the storeroom Every um, banking CRA um, who who has, and all of them has to have for a state, state level, have to have an MCAP, a storeroom of assets. They get to decide what's in there. Now, you, uh, I'll get to a screen in a minute that's going to um, limit how you have to have good assets. Or you can choose which ones you want, but if your rating floor fa falls below a certain level, you put assets in there and they, they become worthless and then you have to sell them off for pennies on the dollar. That's not going to look good on you and you might lose the ability to be a uh, banking CRA, to have your own currency. So you want to make sure it's stable. 
and there's avenues to do that. I'll get to a screen in a minute for that. An MCAT must synchronize the value of a unit of currency with a back dollar. So it's a long clause here. Highly important, this is key to the whole currency. You have the MCAT, you have assets. The MCAT must, what's the um, unit of currency? I'll, I'll go over a couple um, potential names in a minute, ones I made up. But um, the back dollar is going to be, and I'll get to the back dollar in a few, few um, clauses here, but the back dollar is going to be the average of all the CRAs, all the currencies from all the MCAPs. Okay, it, M, so the unit cannot be um, worth $1 in one place, $10 in another spot, in another currency, $0.10 cents in another one. We don't want to go to the store and have, hey, it's um, it's from currency A, it'll take 10 um, units of currency, but currency B, it'll only take five. Currency C, it'll take 25. We don't want that. So you're going to synchronize the value of your unit of currency with the back dollar. The back dollar is going to be the average. I'll get to that in a minute. An MCAP must create the number of units of currency to match the value of the total assets of the MCAP. So if you have $100 million worth of assets, as defined by the MD, you have $1 million, what did I say? $100 million um, worth of assets, you can put out 100 million units of your currency. So that's clear, very direct. All CRA currencies must be 100% backed up by its MCAP and readily exchanged for those actual items. So it has to match it exactly. I know I might be repeating myself, but in constitutional law, I don't want there to be any misunderstanding, no misinterpretations. You have to have 100% backed up. If you have 100 ounces of gold, that would be, what is it, um, 2,000, almost two, let's just say it's 2,000 right now. Um, you have 100 ounces, 2,000 would be, why am I getting $200,000 worth of gold. So you can do 200 ounces, I mean 200 units of your currency. I got, I got it on, um, I have it in an example here in a minute. Okay, and it has to be readily exchanged for those actual items. Anybody can go into there and grab the stocks, the bonds, the, the gold to match dollars that you got, to match the currency that you have. So you can't go out and buy a million dollars worth of gold for one unit of, uh, or two or three units of currency. Two or three units of currency buys two or three dollars worth of assets in that, it doesn't buy, it's exchanged for. The currency is ownership certificates. Okay, all assets in the MCAP are owned by the owners of the CRA currency. Direct language in the Constitution. These are ownership um, certificates. Each unit of currency represents ownership of a percentage of the MCAP equal to the total value of the assets in the MCAP divided by the number of units of the currency issued by the MCAP. What I'm trying to say here is a unit of currency is ownership of a percentage of the full uh, um, MCAP. Um, if, so if you have... Um, let's say you own one, let's say, I'll, I'll get to an example in a minute. Sector 19 rating system must set a rating floor to ensure honest pricing of MCAPs and the ease of transfer of assets. So because I'm going to put a clause in there that uh, anybody doing business has to accept any of the currencies, there has to be an ease of transfer. And uh, um, I have a very easy way of doing that. One central um, clearing base clearance method for all the different currencies going through the banking system. So I have a system for that. So, but you cannot just put um, kindergarten finger um, paintings in there, call them $1,000 each, and thinking that um, you can just get away with that. You have to actually sell off the um, assets if people um, say, no, I don't want the finger painting, sell off the assets, give me the dollars. And if, if the finger paintings aren't worth $1,000, then they're going to have to go into their other assets, get um, sell it off, and then give that assets. And the people who own other people who own that currency is going to have to take a uh, major haircut on that, on their value. So there, you can't do that. There's a lot of ways. I ensure um, you have to be honest about pricing. 
There's many, many different financial situations and financial instruments to make sure people are honest with their um, pricing, such as selling short on uh, assets that you, you that are questionable. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Let's keep on going. The Federal Level Sector Board, Financial Banking CRA Sector Board, a mouthful there. So, the Federal Level Sector Board, the Financial CRA, from the F Financial Banking CRA, that sector board, maybe I did that twice, I need to relook at that, must create the paper and coin currency full, uh, fully backed up proportionally with state level CRA currencies, named the back dollar. This is highly important to understand. This is going to keep one standard, the average. The back dollar is the average. But the paper and coin are going to come from the BD, from the federal level sector board. They collect up assets from the currencies. Well, they collect the, collect the currencies, not the assets. They collect the currencies, which is ownership of the assets. Um, but they, and they have to do it proportionally. That's a key word, proportionally. Um, so if one MCAP has $10 worth of assets, another one has $5, proportionally means the one with 10 does twice as much as the one with five. Okay, uh, proportionally with state level CRA currencies. So the federal sector board is gonna collect state level CRA currencies. Highly important. Uh, name the back dollar. So I'm gonna come back to that because it's so incredibly important. I'm gonna have examples. Every um, CRA currency must continually, uh, continuously adjust its number of units of currency so that each currency currency's unit, each currency unit's value matches the BD unit's value. <clears throat> now, this means digital is not part of the um, clause. I already used the digital up front, but because I just wanted to put that down there to stress, being digital, if somebody loses or gains 1%, you can either take away 1% of the units or increase. It's kind of like a mutual fund to some degree. Um, your, that mutual fund can increase or decrease in value. That means um, the number of units of dollars you have goes up or down. So it's not nothing that we haven't seen before. But because we're doing this, we don't have a, a, a over. This is a standard. The BD is a standard. Each currency is separate. It is this um, like a mu separate mutual fund with a lot of assets in it? So let's continue going. The current U.S. dollar will become worthless after the transition. So we're going to give it value, but then at one point it's going to become worthless. The current U.S. dollar is a government liability. So government has to fulfill the, its um, assets, I mean fulfill, fulfill its obligations. Federal Reserve assets are government assets. So anything in the Federal Reserve, which they have gold, but they also have mortgage-backed securities and a lot of assets they bought. All these asset um, buying projects they have trying to monetize the debt, um, that, that's pulling in real assets. So the Federal Reserve owns a lot of assets. To say our fiat currency is not backed up is not le totally legitimate. It's not well backed up. It's a very bad system. But it still has its back backing by mortgage-backed securities, by gold, and the like. Okay. These liabilities and assets are addressed in section 12 of this amendment. I have a full section dealing with that. Um, it, the, U, the US dollar will be considered a liability and all the assets the Federal Reserve has is a um, asset. Then you have government land, you have other, we're selling off all government property anyway, so that's gonna be assets. Um, so we will fully fund the US dollar. We'll make good on that. Every currency from the constitutional, constitutionally established MCAP is legal tender that must, constitutional language, must be accepted as payment within America. So they cannot deny payment for the reasons of what currency you're using as long as it's a, a legitimate um, constitutional established MCAP. So if it's a legitimate currency, they have to do it. Now they can deny service for a different reason. And that, that, don't get me wrong, but you cannot deny, um, deny it for the type of tender 
legal tender that you're using. They are legal tender, and if you're gonna accept payment, you have to accept any of the currencies within the United States. And they're gonna be one to 4,000 different currencies, and I'll explain that to you in a little bit. Any entity holding the MCAP currency may demand any asset from the MCAP. So they're gonna to have to list their assets. And if you have that currency, or any BD really, any currency, you can go get any asset from any of the MCAPs. Um, and it's their ownership certificates in exchange for the currency. Um, in, any entity holding an MCAP currency may demand the MCAP exchange its currency for the BD. So I do that just because that finger, finger painting, kindergarten finger painting um, trick might come into play somewhere where, hey, I just don't like your assets. I don't want any of your assets. Uh, sell off your assets and give me the BD. And, but that's not even gonna be coming into play because of the way the federal sector board will deal with um, being the clearinghouse for all these currencies, they're gonna have a way of doing that. And they'll work all that behind the scenes. I know what they're gonna, I know how it can be done. I'm not even sure exactly what method, but there's a lot of methods to be done. I can contemplate a dozen different methods very rapidly on how they could do it. But I have a good understanding that it can be done, that I'm sure of, and then how they do it exactly is what it's up to them. But um, they're gonna be very mechanical. It's not gonna be, there's not gonna be a lot of subjectivity out of there. The Federal Parent Sector Board, as long as they're above the rating floor for legitimate currency, as long as they're doing the right kind of things and they have limitations on that, but then um, you have to take it as currency. As long as they're a currency, that means they met that threshold of being above the rating floors. So that's already been established. And um, if if somebody doesn't want to take somebody's currency, there, there's ways to deal with that. That's what I'm trying to say. I mean, all the currencies are going to be good. They can do it the way they want to, but they have to be above a rating floor on legitimacy and anti-fraud and the like. And I have a lot of anti-fraud. My rating systems are going to be able to take care of fraud. Anything dealing with low integrity. So we have a rating system surrounding this. Um, at, yeah, one in this in this system. So that's going to handle it. So if you're a legitimate legal tender, legitimate MCAP currency, you will have the legitimacy of um, being legit. And nobody else has to analyze you. We have people analyzing them already and they got, a, got their certificate of being a legitimate currency. So everybody has to accept it and everybody's bank can deal with that. Examples. Okay, that's my, um, that's my constitutional clauses. I know I did a lot of explanation, but I'm going to keep on going and then I'm going to do a lot of examples and this is probably going to be about an hour and a half long video. I'm 43 minutes into it now, but I just want to show you how this is going to work. Okay, and examples of a monetary currency asset, por asset portfolio. Now, okay, I want to def describe, I want to do my definition of a currency. This is a definition of a currency. I made it up. It, it, it's very different than everybody else's definition. My monetary policy is very different from anybody else's monetary policy. And um, so let me do my definition. I'm going to take a minute to go through this. Currency is a service. Service is highly important in this um, in this definition. It's a service. From free enterprises, invisible hand, keeping a ledger that facilitates one side provision, yet two party trades at different times, at different values, and the services provided going to and from the universe of all traders in proportion to each person's provision. Now, I've thought a lot, lot about this, a uh, lot about this definition, and I think this is a very good definition of what a currency is, and that's what what we have in America right now. But in America, with the Federal Reserve monetizing the debt, we they're putting money into the system. That means there's not a two-sided agreement. And that also means they're not, when you create um, currency, you're supposed to be creating value, put, put 
putting somebody's service into it with value going in. Mine, it does, because you only create um, currency based off of somebody's product or services going into the market. You serve somebody else, there's two-sided agreement on that service, two-sided agreement on the price, so somebody had to give over um, cash to you to, for doing that service. Now, you can use that cash to do a two-sided agreement with somebody else to, with a provision going to you and the services coming from the other person. But it can be at different times, different values, and um, and different people. So it's a lot, it's a lot of things, but it's still two-party trades, two-party agreed, agreed upon trades. So it's highly important to understand the definition of money. So let's go keep on going. <clears throat> okay, I have about four screens on here. I broke it up because I wanted to see what might be in a um, currency out, a monetary currency asset portfolio and cap. Okay, gold. I have roughly what? Are, what is it? About nineteen billion dollars. Copper, fifteen billion. Silver, seven billion. Exxon stock, seven hundred um, million. PepsiCo stock, seven hundred million. Municipal bonds from New York, two hundred fifty-eight million. Municipal bonds from Houston, sixty-nine million. Corn, pork bellies, um, crude oil, natural gas, wheat, soybeans, live cattle, land appraised value, um, car loans grade A, home loans grade B, credit card loans grade C. Obviously, there's different levels of secure um, loans. Credit cards not as good as home loans, maybe not as good as a car loan because car loan is shorter term. Business loan grade A, which means they had a really good business plan and a really good track record. Grocery stores, um, merchandise on the grocery store shelves could be within the MCAP. Military corporations, future tax revenue, um, roads, um, these are gonna be, roads are gonna be in the free enterprise system. People can own road stocks, they have to have stocks. Um, it has to be a public corporation with stocks. Education share loans, police corporations, nature parks, <coughs> nature parks are going free enterprise but with a lot of control saying that they have to stay in nature parks. Uh, foreign currencies, are, that's an Argentina peso, British pound, China yen. Um, so we can have all the different currencies from um, all the different countries. Po hopefully they'll go to the system. Pockets of freedom, um, don't worry about that until, like, until you look at that video and understand what pockets of freedom are. Prison corporations, free enterprise prisons, they're gonna own all the prisons. And so they're gonna have assets and um, income and, and stuff. Um, char the charity economy, you have to understand what the charity economy is, but they're gonna uh, have assets as well. CRAs, um, yeah, they're private organizations. Um, they have government responsibilities, but they're, they'll have some um, assets <coughs> or worth some money. Percentage of products in stores, every store they can have their product as part of the assets in the, in the, in the portfolio. Um, I'll, I'll explain that to you. It's going to be probably another blog. I'll, I'll have that in there, but I have blogs on that. How you can put products in um, Walmart, a local little place. They can, um, the product will belong to the portfolio, which means it's already owned by somebody else. You have to exchange money for it, obviously, um, for it, but then I'll explain that, how that goes. I want to do a lot of different blogs on this once I have the time. Probably be later on in the year. Retirement accounts, um, insurance corporations, um, infrastructure corporations, farms, um, thousands of other items. A CRA's currency is I have it at one trillion three hundred seventeen billion seven hundred sixty eight million five hundred eighty five hundred eighty eight thousand five hundred sixty seven dollars. Now, that's how much assets are in that um, portfolio. They can have that many units of currency, 1 trillion, 317 billion units of currency going all the way out to the last decimal point. So that's how many units of currency they're allowed to have. Now, if PepsiCo stock or Exxon stock or gold goes up or down in value and all the other ones go up and down in value a little bit, the portfolio will change in value. And you might only have 1% less in, let's say you have 1,000 I mean, one trillion two hundred billion. We lost. That's a lot. Of, that's about eight percent loss. Maybe a little bit too much of a loss there. But let's say you have 
one trillion three hundred sixteen billion versus three hundred six seventeen billion. We lost maybe um one tenth of one percent. Well, everybody takes a little haircut on that, and every and the units go away a little bit. So let's go through that a little bit more. But that's an example of an MCAP. This portfolio can distribute. That's the number. That's the number we just saw up there. Units of currency, $1.3 trillion. Unit, I mean, 1.3 trillion units of currency. If more assets are added, more currency is also added. If people turn in currency to take, to take assets, the currency turned in is worthless and it just vanishes into thin air. It's digital. And kept in banks, I said kept in banks, it's just off to the side, um, it's digital, so it's, it just goes away until more assets are added. So the, the monetary, you can add um, assets into the system and when you add assets, you add currency. Take away assets, you lose currency. It always has to match exactly. As each item in the portfolio continually adjusts in value, the total of the va full portfolio also adjusts. So that's gonna be on a daily basis, um, the items adjusting in there. and. It's doubtful that I'll ever move more than 1% over the, outside the average with the BD. But if it does, you lose 1%, you gain 1% the next day. It's more, more likely going to be 0 0.1, 0 0.2 uh, per, per day. It's kind of like the stock market is now, the Dow. Hopefully it's not going to be as volatile as that. I doubt it will because the Federal Reserve is not going to be playing a role. Okay, so always good to come back to this. It's been a long time since I've seen the screen. You have to understand, you are selecting your CRA that you want to do business with. And you elect their leaders. And those leaders for the financial CRA, they manage that portfolio. So if they bring in a stock that does poorly, then everybody starts losing money from that portfolio. If they bring in a stock that does well, they will do well. If they give a million dollar loan to somebody for a house that's only um, half a million dollars, and they're only making minimum wage, obviously that's a bad loan, and you're gonna lose a lot of money, but the people in that portfolio lose that money. The other people in the other portfolios, they don't lose any money for that bad loan. Right now, if the Federal Reserve takes out a mortgage-backed security that does poorly, everybody in the nation has to take that loss through inflation and through other means. But only that CRA is going to take that loss. So if a CRA does poorly, People would choose another bank, or that bank will skip and go to another um, CRA, financial CRA, and be involved in their uh, MCAP. And they have a full government. They have executive, legislative, and judicial. So they'll they'll deal with whatever they need to deal with. And if some things need to go up to the fed, the C sector board level, they can. And um, the federal sector board. They're going to have some controls over some things, but they're going to be mostly just mechanical, very mechanical. They're not going to have too much say over um, um, standards. Another part, the rating system will have controls over some standards to some degree, making sure they're not creating negative externalities, make sure they're not doing fraud and being low integrity. Okay, they're going to be likely over 100 states in the new country that I, if my constitution goes into place. Anybody with any city that's over like a million people, um, they're going to be able to have, they're going, they can create their own state. So there's a lot of cities like that right now. And any continuous, um, contiguous local governments, let's say three or four um, that equal up over a million, they can make their own um, state. I think um, one of the states, the lowest one is like 700, 800 million. I'm sorry, seven or 800,000 almost a million. So if you're above the lowest um, pop, higher, have a higher population than the least populated state, you are allowed to become a distinct American state. And no state can be less than 500,000. Anyway, so with that, there, there, um, there could be several hundred um, states, but I'm predicting 100, maybe 150 states, somewhere on there. So um, there's likely gonna be over 100 states with about 12 different um, MCAPs per state, or over 1,000 MCAPs, thus 1,000 currencies. And I think on my next one, I um, 
bring it up to maybe 2,000. I kind of th thought a little bit different, give it a little more thought, and it could go up a little bit more than that. Each MCAP decides its assets. So each, put it this way, if you have 100 st um, states, that's still 3 million per state uh, on average. And a, um, a CRA has to be between 5 and 20%. So we're talking somewhere around 300, 400,000 per um, CRA. So three or 400,000 people is a lot of people, and that's a big enough for a good bank, a big CRA to govern um, their members. So it gives enough of a heft of people to have really good management. Likely over 100 states, about 12 um, MCAPs per state, over 1,000 MCAPs, that's over 1,000 currencies. Each MCAP decides its own assets. Okay, I named some of the um, MCAPs. Hayek, obviously a famous economist, and actually I got some of these ideas from one of his last um, interviews about um, having um, different uh, currencies back based off of different assets. And um, it's not exactly what he was saying, uh, but it came kind of close, and I took it to a few steps further. Anyway, and he didn't go to, to he didn't do so much competitive. I think he might have touched on it a little bit, but it's not exactly his. But don't get me wrong, but it's it's mine. Uh, but it, he has elements of what I'm trying to get into on one of his last interviews um, when he was quite old. Okay, 500 ounces of gold at 2,000 per ounce. It's not quite 2,000 yet, but make my numbers a little bit easier. Um, equals one million dollars. So let's just talk about it. Very simple MCAP. 500 ounces of gold at $2,000 per ounce equals $1 million. Hayek can issue 1 million units of currency. Okay, 1 million units of currency. If you hold 10,000 units of Hayek, you own 1% of the full portfolio. So you own 1%. A, a unit of currency is 1 1 millionth, and he has 10,000 of them, and Therefore, the math is right, 1%. You have the ownership rights to turn in your, I should put an R there, high acts for 5 ounces of gold. 10,000 10, units will buy 5 ounces of gold. And this this currency is going to be called the high act. So you can turn in your high acts. Okay. If 10,000 units of high acts are exchanged for 5 ounces of gold, the currency disappears because the assets are no longer in the MCAP. So the currency disappears because once you turn it in and get the assets out, the currency is gone because they, the assets are not backing it up anymore. Everything has to be 100% back, backed up. The MCAP now holds 495 ounces of gold, thus worth $990,000. Um, thus, thus can only issue 990 units of HIAX. The one person who um, turned their um, 10,000 units they lose all their currency. It's not lost across the board for everybody. They lose it all because they they got the assets. All the other owners of the HIAX are slight own a slightly larger share of the MCAP because the full value of the MCAP is reduced. The value of each HIAX remains the same. So I just wanted to show you the math. I thought about it enough. And it's always good to do math after you think about it significantly and you do do it on a calculator and you work out the details. Okay, let's reset it. Um, we got 2,500 um, ounces of gold back back in at $2,000 at $2,000 each equals $1 million. <coughs> okay, if the price of gold falls 1% compared to the average of all currencies, the owner of the owner of 10,000 units of HIAX still owns 1% of the all of the of the whole MCAP. He didn't lose anything that he owned. What he owned was reduced in value compared to the average of everybody's currencies. Um, or they still own the five ounces of gold. So they can still go get five ounces of gold because now the gold dropped 1% in value. So 990, can still, 990 units buys five ounces of gold because the gold lost value one percent <coughs> the value of the full MCAP is now only worth nine hundred 
$990,000 and can only issue 990 units of current of Hi-Ax. All the holders of the Hi-Ax lose 1% of their Hi-Ax. So if you had 10,000, now you have 990. Did I did my math right? I forget now. You have you had 10,000, now you have 9,900 uh, Hi-Ax. So you can still buy the gold, the same amount of gold you had, but if you go out in the marketplace and buy a car, you're, you're, you're going to uh, be a little short if you buy a $10,000 something else because what you own lost value. Okay, let's reset again to 500, 500 ounces of gold at $2,000 um, each equals $1 million. If the price of the gold increases 1%, the owner still owns 1% of the MCAP. Still the 5 ounces of gold. However, the value of the full MCAP is now $1,010,000 and can issue $1 million. Did I do that right? One million one hundred. Ooh. One million ten, one million ten thousand units of Hiax. I did the, my math wrong right there. All the holders of the Hiax gain one percent and more Hiax, but they can still only get five ounces of gold with that one million ten thousand units of Hiax because of the cost of gold went up <coughs> compared to the average of all. It's always important to understand compared to the average of all currencies. Let's reset again. We set to 500 ounces of gold at $2,000 each equals $1 million. Someone holding Hiax bought a car for $10,000 or 10,000 BD. And the person accepting the Hiax deposited the Hiax into their bank using the Mises MCAP. So Mises is another famous economist. So he created another, he created, uh, or people who like him created a um, MCAP. And somebody was, somebody who sold the car uses the Mises MCAP, their bank does. So he takes the Hiax and deposits it into his Mises account. The Mises MCAP has ownership rights to five ounces of gold and asks for title transfer from the Hiax MCAP. So the Hiax, does, Hiax MCAP no longer um, has ownership of that because the person who has ownership of it is the person with the currency and that ended up going into the Mises um, MCAP, so the Mises asked for the gold. Now, they could have asked for something else. Maybe they liked um, Amazon stock or something like that. Or if that's all they have, they'll take the gold and sell it off somewhere else, or they'll ask for um, M, uh, BDs of money. Um, and that means the Hayek MCAP would have to sell off and pay, uh, sell off some gold and pay out the dollars. And that's all very low cost. It, it's going to be a big setup at the beginning, but that's going to be very low overall cost. So everybody included might be many, many millions of dollars to manage this accountability, um, a lot of audits and stuff, many, probably a couple million dollars. I mean, a couple billion dollars, probably overall operation, but that's a very minor percentage of all the MCAPs. Okay. The Mises MCAP adds five ounces of gold to its assets thus allowing it to issue 10,000 more units of Mises, of the Mises, that's the unit of currency. The extra Mises is, goes into the account of the person selling the car. The Hayek MCAP loses assets that thus can issue 10,000 less Hayeks and that coming out of the account of the person buying the car. So you understand what's going on there. I believe I got everything right on that one. Okay, let's talk about this. The Federal Sector Board will handle roughly 2,000 to 4,000 state MCAPs. So I increased that. I, I know I said 1,000 a minute ago. Is it gonna go up to 4,000? I don't know. Um, we're gonna have, we might go up to as many as 2,000, I mean 200 states. And it could be up to close to 15 or 16 per. We just don't know how many MCAP, MCAPs are gonna be. Somewhere between 100 to 200 states, maybe even a little bit higher. Um, we'll, see, we'll see how that works, but that's fine. We can have a state with a million people and work just fine. And if a state has a million people, a typical CRA is going to be 10% or so, and that'd be 100,000. So 100,000 is definitely enough to have a good MCAP. About 100 to 200 states and about 12, per, 12 MCAPs per state. Most MCAPs will have about 100 to 500,000 people in it. 
So good variety there. It could go as low as probably 50,000 on some, maybe a little bit above 500,000 on others. Uh, but I think the bulk of it will be between 100 and 500,000 per M cap. Um, but definitely could be as low as 30 or 40,000 as well, people. But that's still a lot of money. The average person is likely going to generate over $200,000 worth, worth of assets in their M cap at any one time. That's their house. Because when a house gets built, that's a whole new asset. Well, their, their mortgage is an asset in itself, backed up by the asset of the house. <coughs> so it's double, um, double assets. The person's ability to work in the future for 30 years and paying off a percentage of their income or a dollar amount of their income. And the, ass, and the backup is the um, actual house itself. So there's, that's an asset. So that can create new money because you have that asset. The people who own that asset is the people who have owned the dollars but you're owning the contract, the mortgage contract. So let's not, let's say, I, I own that piece of um, paper, that currency, so I get to go move into that house. No, you own the mortgage contract. If they default on that mortgage contract but not paying, then you can de um, take the house away from them through the legal process if you own enough of the pieces of paper saying that you own the house. Uh, you're dealing with a lot of contracts, put it that way. Um, there's, you have to, um, I'm not gonna get into it now, it's a contract, and whatever terms are in that contract, you have to abide by. And people beware of um, what type of contract, what type of terms there are in a contract. That's why there's a dozen different MCAPs. Each one saying, I don't like those terms. I don't think I'm protected. Or, hey, if you give too much protection to the bank, not enough protection for the individual, that's not going to be good either. So there's going to be a good balance between the too, too, too much in favor of the um, homeowner, too much in favor of the bank, given the mortgages. And there'll probably be outside companies that just do mortgages that specialize in services of the mortgage and, and the mortgage contracts and coordinating with the MCAP to get some value to it. Okay, most MCAPs will have about 100,000 to 200,000 people or 100 to 500,000 people. I just went over that. And I don't know. I'm making up some of the numbers based off of realistic possibilities. I ran the numbers, thought about it a long time, and um, you never know what's going to happen, but I can't imagine it being too much off of these numbers. I, I can imagine it being 10% of this, but not but not so much. 10% um, 10% eh, would be kind of low for that. Um, anyway, the average person is likely going to generate over 200000 each. MCAPs will likely hold $10 billion to $200 billion each. I know that's a big range, but um, I think each MCAP is going to be somewhere around that range. Um, and I know that's a 20, 20 times range, $10 billion to $200 billion, but I think most are going to be in that range. All MCAPs are likely to total $50 to $100 trillion when you add up all the MCAPs, all 1 to 2,000, 3,000 distinct um, MCAPs. Add them all up. And I looked on the internet and we're somewhere around the 80 some, maybe 70 some um, trillion dollars worth of net worth out there for Americans. And um, anyway, I, I got some of these numbers and I think I think I think the numbers are good, but if the numbers aren't exactly right. I think the system still works. We'll, we'll keep on going. Okay, here's the list of MCAPs that I, I saw in the night names to. Hayek MCAP, Mises MCAP, uh, Friedman from Milton Friedman, um, Soul, it's like Thomas Soul, Janet Yellen, um, Walter Williams, um, Volcker, Greenspan, uh, Ben Bernanke, um, Powell, the current Fed chairman. Let's say all those people who, or they named their um, currency after the famous Fed chairman or economist. So um, let's continue going. But I just said, here's an example of um, some different currencies. Now, this is more, more likely a state. Um, worth there's um, there's probably going to be 100 200 states maybe 300 and um, this is an example of one state because if you try to do all 1,000 2,000 it's just going to get too complex you can't see it but within one state um, the high has 12 Mises has 16 percent Seoul has 13 percent Bernanke has 5 percent these are different ones for for the state and um, when you go Get the um let's go to the next screen the federal level sector board financial banking cra sector board 
must create the paper and coin currency fully backed up, very important word, proportionally with state level CRA currencies named the back dollar. So paper and coin must be the BD proportionally to make the numbers easier. Um, let's look at this one state. Okay, this is not a clause. Um, I just wrote this out. I want to emphasize proportional. The paper, the, the BD is proportional. And they have, when I say proportional, not, not um, the same, purport, let's go over it real quick so you understand what I'm saying. Hi, if Hayek has $120 billion in theirs and Mises has 160, Hayek has 12% of the overall currency. They have to give up 12% towards the BD. Um, Mises has to give up 16%. That's what I'm talking about, pur proportional. There's 10 um, on here listed. Not all of them give up 10%. They give up proportional to their total value of their end cap. So I have all the different ones here. And I think I did, I got another one and I'll show you in a minute. If a person wants paper or coin, they take their end cap currency to the federal sector board. So it's important to understand. They take their end cap currency to the federal sector board, technically. The bank's going to um, do facilitate this. Don't get me wrong. You're not going to have to go to another place. You can use your bank. The banks can facilitate it. But um, technically, the person takes their MCAP currency to the federal sector board, and the banks can do it, and they trade their MCAP currency for the BD, which means the um, BD must be fully backed up by the MCAP currency. The banks will facilitate the exchange. So if I want $1,000 worth of cash, I take it to my bank, it's digital, my, my MCAP digital, and say, I want the BD. They'll um, take currency from their currency, bring it up to the um, MCAP. I mean, to the, I'm sorry. They'll take it up to the federal sector board, to the BD. They'll get um, 1,000 of BD there, but have $1,000 worth of um, currency up there to the BD. Because the BD gave me the cash. So they have exactly as much um, currency from the uh, MCAP currencies as the BDs they gave out. So if I ever turn these BD back into the bank saying I don't want it anymore, I want it all digital, then the assets have to come back down to the um, MCAPs. It is likely that each MCAP currency will be naturally equal. So with a thousand of them, they're going to be almost equal. Just naturally, they're going to um, e equal to the, um, not everybody 10%, but everybody equal to their percentage of their earn cap. So if you have 12%, naturally you're going to be roughly around 12%. For, however, the constitutional clause requiring exact proportionality. So here, Hayek's M cap will supply 12% of the currency to back up the BD, and the Powell M cap will supply 7% of currency to back up the BD. So each one will do its percentage. And I have um, the assets over here. I'm sorry. Assets over here. And I say 10% of the currency is um, being demanded by the people to be paper. So um, Hayek had $120 billion. They give up $12 billion to the federal sector board. And then they get that currency, the BD, and they um, give it to their people that um, demand the currency. So it has to be exactly proportional. Now, what happens when it's not exactly proportional? Um, let's go to the next one. If the high act um, MCAP is overrepresented and the Greenspan MCAP is underrepresented, the Federal Sector Board must turn over some Greenspan currency to the high act MCAP in exchange for more Hayek currency. The Hayek MCAP exchanges for its Greens Greenspan assets, thus making it part of the um, Hayek currency. So I know if you just, for the first time just listening to this, you're not gonna understand that. You have to give it a lot of good understanding of how you take and make it proportional. But it's just math. At this point, it's just math. They don't have, the, the Federal Sector Board ha is going to be extremely mechanical. The, um, they're not going to be able to make up new currencies without getting the actual assets from the um, MCAPs itself. 
The Big D will be the standard pricing in America. So when you go buy a car, to groceries, to Walmart, wherever you go, um, it is always the average of all currencies. Because it's going to be paper, you can hold on to it for years, and it still stays the average. It is always fully backed up. 100% everything we do is fully backed up. It is unlikely that many currencies will very much. Consumers will force good MCAT management. Um, you're just going to have to think about it enough to understand that if one starts doing badly, people aren't going to trust it. They're going to um, sell their currency from that MCAT that's doing badly. They're going to fall below 1% and they're going to have to merge with another, selling their assets, which are still good assets, into another um, MCAT. Um, or give it to their customers and say, go put it into the MCAT that you want to bank with from now on. There cannot be a bank run. Obviously, you can uh, a, one can be emptied out, but as you take out assets, the currency units go down. The last um, currency should take the last asset. The way this works is if there's 10 ounces of gold and um, at 2,000 each, and there's 20,000 un units left, well, 2,000 is going to pull out one unit, one ounce of gold, and um, there'll be nine left with 18, 18, um, 18,000 units of currency left, nine ounces of gold. One ounce each time is pulled out. 2,000 units disappear at, 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 after each one. At, in, the, in the end, you're going to have 2,000 units um, with, um, out there in the marketplace of all the currencies, one ounce of gold. That person with that last 2,000 go takes takes that piece of gold. Zero currency in the um, zero assets in the portfolio. No more currencies. Nobody lost any money. So there could be a bank run in the, in the matter of that, but that's not what a bank run is. Bank runs are a little bit different. Sure, all the people can turn in their yelling currency if they are managed badly. However. And I'm not saying that Yellen manages currency badly. Don't get me wrong. I mean, regardless of my thought pattern on current Fed chairman or past pet Fed chairman, regardless, I'm just putting names up there. However, as money is turned in, the assets are either taken by the people or taken by other MCAPs. As people trade in their Yellen for the Williams, the Williams is another currency, if the MCAP falls under 5% of the state, uh, they must dissolve and sell off their assets to other MCAPs or they just tell everybody to take their bank account, move it to a new bank account or their banks will go to another MCAP and take the currencies with that. They'll, um, and, those, and those new MCAPs will gobble up all the assets, the last, one, last units of currency taking the last asset. And again, there's going to be many mechanisms to stop bad management of MCAPs and somebody putting in finger, worthless fingerprint uh, finger paintings at a thousand dollars a head. This is not going to happen. All banks and all MCAPs will be able to turn in all currencies uh, to the Federal Reserve Board, I mean Federal Sector Board, as cl a clearinghouse for all currencies. So this is going to be a clearinghouse. There's going to be a thousand um, currencies going up and then the Federal Federal um, Sector Board is going to have a mechanism just to organize it and then give everybody back their currencies. And if you are short some currencies, that means more people that use your banks sold uh, or bought product and that money now goes to another currency. So the people who are heavy, they'll, they'll get assets from the people who are light, the MCAPs that are light. So if you think about it, It'll make sense. I don't have enough time to give you full explanation right now, but I think I did, but I know it took me a lot, a lot of times to think what's heavy, what's light. Um, but if you, if you have stuff from your people that um, sold a lot of their stuff, that means their currency, um, when I sold, bought a lot of stuff, that means their currency went to another MCAP. And their MCAP's coming over to grab some assets because they're the rightful owner of it. All the MCAPs will be either light or heavy. They will have to give up assets or gain ass assets. And again, unless you really think about it, heavy or light could mean two different things here. Giving up or gaining ass assets, <coughs> that, that's 
self-explanatory. But um, if you think about it, you'll understand that on a daily basis, these, these things will be in flux. The assets will change in value some, and then uh, assets will have to be moved from one to the other on a constant basis. Everything extremely mechanical, though. Um, it's, the system is going to be sound. The price of each asset in each MCAP will adjust daily. So that's going to be important. And MCAPs will be either above or below the average. So if you're above the average, you gain a little bit of units. If you're below the average, you lose a little bit of units. You don't lose what you own. What you own is with the assets in that thing, a percentage of the assets are within your MCAP. So a currency means that. Now, if you want to stay very stable, there will be accounts out there holding just the BD, which means you just get the average, extremely stable. Uh, and if you want just to do an investment, you can just invest right in your MCAP. It, because you're owning PepsiCo stock, you're owning Amazon stock, you're owning um, Exxon stock, you're owning all these high value stocks, you're owning gold, you're owning um, all these things that will appreciate in value. It loans, the service charge and selling um, money over the use of time, <coughs> all these things are valuable. The price of each asset in each MCAP will adjust daily. MCAPs will be either above or below average. If below, the MCAP loses units. If above, the MCAP gains units. Each MCAP is in constant flux. Assets entering or exiting. The assets changing value. In MCAPs, um, customer buying and selling with people using other MCAPs. Creating money, I mean, creating new currency with new assets or dissolving currencies by taking it out of the MCAP. So these things are always in major fluctuation. Okay, watch my other videos and read my blog. So this video is about over here. I'm out an hour and 21 minutes right now. But I have many blogs on there. I have a lot of write-up on my website about it, Haley2024.org. Okay, one of my blogs was a new house as capital for new currency. Very self-explanatory and, and how that works. I work out the math. New currency for increased human capital, education loans. An example of a monetary currency asset portfolio, I kind of went over that in this one, but that one goes over it significantly within a good blog. The basic working of a currency portfolio, it will do a lot what we just did here, but it takes you step by step. Uh, arbitrage opportunities will keep currency portfolio prices honest. So that's just a good um, blog there. Does anyone have to say before someone else can borrow? The answer is yes and no, and I explain the, the difference. Turning food into currency, a lot of food on the grocery shelf or in the manufacturing plant or out there on the farm, it can belong in the MCAP or at least a portion of it um, as, as the price goes on. As every stage of development of corn, um, from planting the corn, you, it's more valuable a month later after people put um, labors out in uh, there. Once it's fully grown, it's more valuable, but it's much more valuable once it's all picked and in a truck going to a manufacturing plant. That's much more valuable when it's, once it's cleaned, cut, and put into cans or shipped to the grocery store as corn on the cob type of thing. So, and then, it's only valuable, let's say, a dollar for on the cor corn on the cob in the store, but a dollar fifty at the register because you pay for the retail establishment. So every as every aspect of the um, delivery unit, from planting the corn corn or preparing the um, field for planting the seed of the corn to putting it on your table, it all adds um, worth to the system, and all that can be all that worth can be put into the monetary system. But once somebody buys it retail and gets ready to buy it into it, all that value vanishes. And when you pay at the register um, at the grocery store, um, that sh that brings that full worth that, that let's say you pay $15 for however many um, corn on the cobs, that, that full worth of all that um, work you did is realized at that point in time when you paid that $15 for so many um, ears of corn. Um, anyway, government debt built into the monetary system. I explained how that works. That's pretty interesting. Fractional reverse, fractional reserve banking is not relevant under Haley 2024 monetary policy. That's more of a fiat currency, more of a current currency, whether it's done by gold or wherever it's at. Uh, that's a 
different type of currency. I have a full different system and it's not relevant under this. Bank runs are not possible under Haley 2024 monetary policy. I, I explain it all out in a nice blog. Okay, pretty much done here. Here's um, all 30, 30 sectors again. You see 15 and 15. So you see where um, the whole system goes. Look at those other videos. It's really interesting how all that works. I'm on sector um, 18 and 19 right now. And um, it's really interesting to see what I'm going to do with insurance and food and education. Um, those are really, well, insurance is really interesting. Food is going to be pretty normal. Education is super interesting. Human resources, pretty interesting. Identity, I put a lot of good, really good stuff in there. And I, I can give a lot of good services out of there in the free market system. So all these things are going to be interesting. This is a good video. I mean, this is a good screen to um, end on. You always select your CRA. Then you vote within your CRA for your CRA leadership. And then when there um, needs to be representation, go to the representative body. You vote within your CRA to send representatives up. That's highly important. And then um, everything's easy to find on Haley 2024 The Movement. Please consider a donation to Haley 2024 The Movement. Um, I'm trying to hire somebody to do some social media for me, help edit my website, just help me do a lot of work I need to do, maybe a little bit of research, um, editing, and the like. Deal with my videos. Anyway, until the next video.